Tonight, a heartwarming story of triumph as one man overcomes his disability of being completely unfunny to rise as one of the most successful comedians in American history. Tonight, Timothy Allen Dick gets deep, fat, fried. Deep, fat, fried. That's right. That's right, Timothy Allen Dick. Um, you know, I guess at the start here, a little factoid we found. For one week in November 1994, Tim Allen had the number one uh, rated television series, Home Improvement, the number one movie at the box office, The Santa Claus, and the number one book on the bestsellers list with Don't Stand Too Close to a Naked Man. So, for at least a week in 1994, Tim Allen was the shit in entertainment. Welcome to a deep and fun! Total oh, oh, media shit, sorry. dominance. I was waiting to do that the right moment. Total but media dominance. Dude, he was dominating, dude. Home Improvement ran for eight seasons. So, I mean, he was on top there. And that's like his prime, dude. So, that's like right in the middle of Home yeah. Improvement. So, the kids were still kind of cute, but not really that cute. Uh, then you had the Santa Claus, <laughs> which TJ, we talked about. You said that does not hold up well at all. Uh, you know, I had I saw it in theaters as a kid when I was nine years old, and I remember liking it. I saw it with mom. You know, she took me to see it. It was one of like yeah. it was a me and mom kind of adventure. We saw it. We laughed. We had a great time. I decided to rewatch it recently for nostalgia value. <sighs> see how it holds up. I got about 10 minutes in, and my nostalgia for that movie was just fucking dead. So you, you tapped within <laughs> 10 minutes. 10 oh, minutes, yeah. and you were gone. No, I don't even know if I made it 10 minutes. Um, I watched maybe like five minutes and said, you know what? This is never going to be for me. It was fine when I was nine years old, but 32-year-old <laughs> TJ wants nothing to do with this festering pile of shit. Uh, until looking at this show, I haven't had anything to do with Tim Allen in years. In fact, that's how this all got started. That was the genesis of this, is Paul came into a room with me and TJ and was like, I fucking hate Tim Allen. You weren't even there. You weren't I thought I was there. there. You dude, were I, not even there. You were not No, there. I heard Paul say that to me, dude. Paul oh, fucking... I, I say it to a lot of people. Oh, okay, so well... You know what? what you know what happened? It was me and Paul. We were sitting there. I was scrolling on YouTube. There was a thumbnail with Tim Allen's face in it. Yeah. And Paul just turned to me with the most seething fucking hatred in his voice like I've never heard before in his life. Where he's like, you know, I can't fucking stand Tim Allen. <laughs> I don't know if it was that bad. Every time I see his fucking face, I want to puke. Was it that dripping with venom? Yes. I think okay. it was. I feel like it was. I don't think I was there for that one. But Paul said that shortly after, like he came into the living room was like, just fucking he's like, Tim Allen is not funny. I despise him. You know, I just cannot stand this guy in any way. And I mean, I can't really blame him because I was like, you know what, TJ, fuck it. Let's put on some Tim so, Allen uh, stand So, Paul, why don't you tell us a little bit about your uh, your fucking Tim Allen feelings and how you came to feel that way? Well, in 1994, I would have been 14 years old. And around this time and within two years in either direction, there was nothing but Tim Allen going on. He was just saturating the entire American entertainment market with everything. The only thing I mean, he didn't most have... Most people cannot brag about having the top TV show, top movie, and top book at the same well, one time. Thing I don't we, know who else even would Do you guys know anything about his book at all? Because I know nothing. I know nothing about it. I, I know absolutely nothing about it, other than it's called Don't Stand Too Close to a Naked Man. Which makes it sound like it's about Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, <laughs> Harvey Weinstein's autobiography. It almost sounds to me, dude, like, not only that, like, it's like Tim Allen wants to get close to a naked man. Like, it, it doesn't really read to me like, you know, he's saying that, like, as, like, a warning. It's more like, don't get fucking close to another naked man. Like, Tim Allen is hiding something about his personality. Tim Allen's like, so. stay away from the naked men, because they're all you know, yeah, yeah, that's how I'm taking it, dude. It's like, whoa, Tim Allen might switch for the other fucking team, dude. I don't know about that. We'll see. But after years and years of that kind of saturation, I don't remember what the event was that pushed me over the brink, but I just, there was one day where I was just done with Tim Allen. Now, even, but even the stuff that you could tolerate previously of his. Was done. Yeah, you can't even. I can't even go back and watch Home Improvement now. It drives me insane. His face makes me fucking crazy. And his voice and his grunts and everything that we're going to cover tonight makes me fucking insane. I hate him as a personality and I hate him as a person. 
<laughs> Whoa. Damn, dude. I mean, Paul is not holding back at all here. Like, honestly, like, Paul, I, th I thought maybe this was like a bit or something that you didn't like, Tim Allen, but I kind of like, I'm really sitting next to Paul. I'm really feeling like this intense. You're feeling the, the, the venom. The venom is fucking coming out of the fangs, I'm dude. sick of his dopey stand up and his dopey fucking <laughs> face and his dope caked <laughs> nose and his dopey fucking TV shows and his dopey interviews. I, you know, like if he died, if he, if he died and then like somebody went back and erased his existence, I'd only them. be happier for it. So you'd be fine with the Mandela effect, you know, writing Tim Allen out of existence yeah. in our reality. We're the only, you know, we're the, they're the only good, uh, fucking sitcom in the nineties was, uh, married with children. You know, there was no fucking Ooh. home improvement. There was no home improvement. Um, the thing about fucking Tim Allen is, uh, I mean, we have his biography here. I don't know if you want to start getting into that. I think he has a, I think it kind of starts off a little boring, but you know, it was just a fucking kid that was born in Denver. I mean, there's stuff, there's stuff on, there's meat on the bone there. There is though. Uh, June. I mean, first of all, uh, the first thing I learned about Tim Allen, and by the way, I just want to say this, you're going to see some of his stand up later cause we got it, Ugh. but I just want to say or that, hear it. Yeah. Or hear it. Uh, I just want to say that as we had to sit there and watch this shit, like it, it went from just being like, this is not funny to this is painful to me to the point where I was like, stop. He, it's really I mean, bad. it's really fucking awful, really fucking painful. The way I diluted it down in my mind was like a single serving of his shtick is just too much. It really is. It's like you're, you're bored. You're tired of him. You're just disgusted with yourself for even wanting to watch something with Tim Allen in it because he's not funny at all. Like, I know a lot of people throw accusations. This person's not funny. This or Kevin Hart's not funny. Um, no, Tim Allen surpasses them all. Oh he's my truly God. not. I, mean, I have never seen a comedian as successful as he is that was less funny than he is i mean you're talking about not funny too you know what else is not funny when you go into the grocery store and you uh you know you find you come back out and you find that there's a ding in your door and you're like <laughs> and uh you know because that's your baby you know as a man your car is your baby you know what i mean i love cars man speaking of cars oh god don't get me started on cars i love big flathead v8 american cars you know what i mean rusty fucking frames uh, uh dual overhead cams chrome wheels baby i love it all oh, oh yeah oh there you go that's a little sample of the kind of humor you'll be hearing from tim later on um the first I, 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 let, let's talk about that signature grunt for just a second we're gonna get back to the grunts in general but let's talk about the super famous grunt uh. That's the one. Uh, they, you know, somebody at the uh, um, at the TV, you know, production studios liked this grunt so much that they wanted America to hear it fucking twenty five times a day. Like it was at the beginning of the show. It was after they came back from commercials at the show, straight into, uh, and then they'd go into the show. The the, the show would end with it. Uh, it was just everywhere. Uh, 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 every time uh, Paul talks uh, now. It just we have to play that sound. So this grunt was basically how Tim Allen made eighty million dollars, <laughs> and, and that's the sad truth. I mean, if without this grunt, he would have been a middle low tier comedian that never had a fucking thing going for him. But well, people know, just loved well, the grunt so uh, much. I think a big part of it was just Tim Allen recognized that people just love this fucking, you know, men versus women shit. Oh, yeah. And he just had the shtick down where it was like it was so palatable for the average person. Because, like, we were watching and we looked at the audience. It was just a bunch of, like, you know, 30 to 40 year old white people going, uh -huh, that's kind of the pin board for your tools. And some guys trace their and we're just like, what? It's just like some of the safest, most vanilla yeah. fucking. Are you sure comedy. about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm positive about that. Are you sure? about that because actually it's pretty dangerous really it's dangerous yeah it is we'll we'll find that out later let's uh, so let's, what let's about his bio the, so the first thing i learned about tim allen that i didn't already know is that his name is not tim allen what is it his name is timothy allen dick tim dick he has three first names which that alone is weird and then anytime someone has dick in their name you know that's always fun i guess yeah. at least he had the good sense to cut it out like nah I think I'm just going to not be dick anymore. The three first names kind of sound serial killery, no matter what. Yeah, like, you know, if, if you were watching Forensic Files or something, like, 
there was a serial killer on the loose, and Timothy Allen Dick was the only suspect. You'd be like, guilty. <laughs> yeah, he's guilty. Well, yeah. guilty. 100% I, I see it. this guy's picture. I see I, I see the fucking Forensic Files guy saying, Timothy Allen Dick. It kind of has a Mark <laughs> David Chapman sort of feel to it. Well, it's because his middle name, like, when you put the middle name, for some reason, serial killers are famous, you know, shooters or killers or whatever. They always use their middle name. Like, middle names usually don't matter unless you kill someone famous or you do some fucking reprehensible shit. Then you, gotta, then, you get a Dick. Full, then you get a full then, name. Then, then for, magically, people care about your full name. Like it's kind of no. like when you do something fucked up as a kid, and your mom is like, "Thomas James Kirk." Yeah. Timothy Allen Dick, get your little piggy grunting ass in here. As a total aside, that's TJ kept his name under wraps for years until our mom actually did that on a live stream. She did. That's how my name got. That's how I got my. She name was just Thomas James Kirk the third, and then she just like, oh, uh, no one knows my name, mom. Whoops. You just outed me, mom. Fuck you, mom. Too late now. Get out of my room. Get out of my room. You don't understand me. So Wait a minute. Got- you have three fucking first names. He. Kirk is yeah. I mean, yeah, I Kirk is a first that. name, dude. Yeah, you're right. Well, you guys better not fuck with me because I'll fucking serial Shit, kill your dude. ass. How did I not realize you had three fucking first so, names? So, TJ. I we, would say you have three first names, but no one would name their kid Parky as a first name. Exactly. That's the point. <laughs> well, we can talk about uh, but Everett, you know. I think we should fucking talk about Tim Allen's biography. Yeah, let's, uh, I'm gonna, let's go through it and uh, let's talk about a little bit the, of the life of Tim let's Allen. Let's talk about the pivotal event that really obviously affected it. And he's mentioned well, hold it. on. I got the whole bio here. Yeah, I know, but. Timothy Allen Dick was born on June 13th, 1953 in Denver, Colorado to Martha Catherine Fox, Gerald M. Dick. Okay, so his father... Martha and Gerald. Martha and Gerald. Martha and Gerald Dick. His they father sound like, was they in sound real like, like Revolutionary War farmers or something. <laughs> his father was in real estate. His, uh, his uh, dad was killed by a drunk driver when driving home from a University of Colorado football game when oh, Tim no. was 11... Uh, 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 I, uh, we're sorry, Tim. Uh, Your father is dead. No, Dad, no. <laughs> uh, 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 um, uh, University of Colorado. His mother was a community service worker. Remarried her high school sweetheart, an Episcopal deacon, Damn. two years after Tim's death. So she had a little Tim's something going death. on the side with little, the, this Episcopal deacon I mean, while I Gerald some, was little, alive. I mean, some, it took some, two years, so, you know. Some, if it some, was some. appearances, if come on If it was now. two months, you know. Come on. Uh, he had a bunch of siblings. So who? I mean, like, this is kind of the who gives a shit part. So here's an interesting aside, though, about his father's uh, being killed in a uh, drunk driving car crash. Which you got to imagine is a really formative fucking thing to happen. Yeah, to a uh, 11, 11 year old. In yeah. 1997, Allen himself was arrested for a DUI in uh, Birmingham, Michigan, and was recorded as having a 0.15 percent blood alcohol content. So he's way over. He's sentenced to one year probation, uh, did rehabilitation, all that shit um i actually do have a uh video here of him talking about that fucking particular incident and that okay. hypocrisy and let's, shit uh, let's take a look if i could find the goddamn thing do 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 the only thing I think you left out was that uh, after his dad died, he, the family was moved to michigan so i kind of feel true. i kind of feel bad from colorado seems a lot cooler than michigan it's where I learned to love cars, you know. <laughs> where you learn to love The birthplace cars. of automotives. Oh, yeah. The motor city, you know what I mean? Yeah, big American muscles, yeah. All right, here we go. You actually got a, a phone call one day from your parole officer and the next day from Jeffrey Katzenberg right. at he, Disney? The parole officer said, you're released, everything was going well, and then the Katzenberg called me and said, we'd like you to be part of the Disney family. Did the irony strike you? I'm, did you say, it, Jeffrey, I'm a felon? My life is just filled with, ar- <laughs> it, it just filled with if irony. You, if you're wondering right now... Um, who that is uh well, let's put it this way uh, in dreamworks there's you see s uh there's a k and there's a g which is steven spielberg jeffrey katzenberg and david geffen so wow. that's a pretty important call to get yeah that's the <laughs> call to get that is the call to get uh at, so that's just him basically saying you're you're in you are now an insider in this fucking game nice you're in tim we like your grunt you're in you got that great grunt, Tim. We want you to keep grunting your way through the 90s. What do you say? And he's like, uh? Uh? 
conversation so spawned Hell and Movement. I think in the capacity of Disney. Dude, it, it, we it, have the it actually so played right at that moment yeah. in the fucking thing, dude. Yeah. And soon, white hot celebrity. Alan parlayed that popularity onto the big screen, starring in a slew of family favorites like The Santa Claus and Ooh, Toy Story. Sucks. Nice. Doesn't this show you that Hollywood can pretty much make or break you at will? Because they got Tim Allen famous. And the, That's the, true. The most amazing thing, I think we take nothing else away from this, is that Tim Allen being famous is just kind of like, you, you want to do one of his grunts, you're going to go, huh? When you evaluate him as a person, you're going to feel that way. Oh, well, they'll, by the end of this, they'll know. Oh, I know. I'm just, I'm just saying that that's probably the takeaway I would have. Our parts together, get ready, and go out on a high note. I pump for you, my little Edelweiss. By now all right, what is he saying there? I pump for you, my little head of vice. I don't know what the fuck that is. I keep hearing, every time I see that clip, it sounds like, I pump for you, my little anal vice. <laughs> anal vice? Yeah, I was like, what the fuck are you, what is he saying? Sounds like a fucking failed death metal band. Anal vice. <laughs> we are anal vice. Anal vice. conquered Hollywood, but still had not wrestled his own demons to the Hollywood. Your dad so you're about to blow that spade. What the fuck? <laughs> Snorted up right, his nose. Hold on, hold on. This is what I was talking about. All you right. and your adult life were arrested for drunk driving. I find it humiliating that, and and I'm by the grace of God, I didn't hurt anybody or myself for the years that I was, you know, drinking and driving. I could have been that guy that did that to us. But you did say it gave you your greatest gift, which is sobriety. Sobriety, yeah. Well, the chair. I never thought that's a shitty gift. Sobriety. Yeah. What if you're a fuck up to the level of like driving around drunk, possibly killing? Yeah, you? like Tim Allen was. I mean, he already had sobriety. It wasn't like sobriety was a gift given to him. He just said, I'm OK. I guess I'm going to stop drinking booze now that I almost <laughs> killed someone and got a year probation. Yeah, I mean, you have to at least give him that he did make a credible life change at that point. He wasn't just because a lot of people just keep doing the same shitty fucking stuff. They're like Tim Allen could have just I mean, he's rich, dude. He could have gotten away with it. He could just hired a high powered lawyer and been like, whatever, I'm not going to fucking do this. I'm just I can keep drinking. I keep living this lifestyle. But it was I mean, I guess I'll give him he at least recognized the mistake he made. Well, he wasn't rich at the time that he got that DUI. Yeah, I that was before no he got discovered. All right, hold on. What not? Uh, I think it was in 97. Oh, shit. Yeah, so he was rich then. He was rich. Jesus Christ. He was. He a definitely rich son didn't of learn his fucking lesson then, did he? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So that's a little aside about the fact that he was, uh, his dad was killed in the DUI, but he himself was doing DUIs, but at least it seems like he's... Well, at least one. Yeah. I mean, he said he was drunk driving for years. Oh, he did say him. that? Oh, yeah, he okay. said it was years. Oh, shit. Wow. So, I mean, he said he definitely could have been that same guy that ended up killing his dad, you know, the same kind of person going out there driving irresponsibly while drunk, uh, you know. That's why Uber is good. But at dude. least at least he seems like he's you know, has genuine contrition for, for that bullshit. Uh, you know what the greatest thing about sobriety is though? Like when you're driving drunk, you don't really enjoy driving the car, you know what I mean? And when you're not drunk, you can really feel the power of that engine, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 the power of that engine, yeah. A flathead V8, man, 0 to 60 in 12.8 seconds, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. oh, my God. God. It's so, I hate, I hate it, dude. I hate his fucking style of humor. Do you guys know if Tim Allen is actually proficient with building anything? Like he was Yes, he is. He actually he is. is. He yes. actually is, yes. Uh, actually, this is something about that. In high school, his favorite subject was shop. Mm -hmm. After high school, he attended Western Michigan University and graduated with a degree in television production. So that's kind of a weird divergence. His passion was shop and building things with his hands, but he goes to college and gets a degree in television production. Now, maybe he wanted to build sets or something. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what television production consists of. I guess that could be. He didn't have a background in acting and stuff, but obviously the two elements that made him what he is were there. There was a drive towards entertainment on some level. And there was a drive towards I'm a builder, I'm a builder, I'm a man's man, you know, I'm 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 this thing. He even calls God the builder. Yeah. He's very obsessed with building things and it's it's all throughout his humor and all that stuff. Um, he's a creator teacher. Here's one of the most interesting things I think about Tim though. Uh, 1978, October 2nd. So 25 year old Tim Allen. Allen was arrested in the uh, Kalamazoo Battle Creek International Airport for possession of over 650 grams. That's 1.43 pounds of cocaine. 
So a pound and a half of coke. Yes. He subsequently pleaded guilty to drug trafficking charges and provided the names of the other dealers in exchange for a sentence of three to seven years rather than a possible life imprisonment. He was paroled on June 12th, 1981, after serving two years and four months in a federal uh, correctional institute, Sandstone in Sandstone, Minnesota. Well, four years, a little better than life. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, so he rolled immediately on everybody within his little Coke dealer network. Oh, yeah. Named names, pointed fingers. Uh, I believe that it said that his uh, testimony... Uh, or his, not testimony, I guess, but just his ratting or whatever the fuck you'd call it on a non-street level, uh, basically netted 20 drug convictions for high-level drug Damn, levels. dude. So Tim Allen was so fucking... So Tim Allen really cracked... T- Tim Allen was really the... He was a the, serious player, though, if he got yeah. that many convictions. Well, he was... I mean, anyone who's... He's anyone got who's pound got a pound and a half. half of fucking coke... Yeah. You know... You're not just dabbling at that point. You're not a fucking street-level dealer there. I mean, like, he was dealing on a high level. Uh, so he knew the big fish, and he actually was... Uh, probably took down the Kalamazoo drug scene... At least the coke scene in Kalamazoo uh, yeah, went for, bye-bye. And probably for at least a little while. I mean, like, there was a, let's just put it this way. Because of Tim Allen in 19, you know, in 1979, there was a lot of coke heads, you know, going around Kalamazoo <laughs> like, fuck! Driving to the next town over. Yeah, you know, I gotta fucking drive over to the next town. Dude, Tim Allen. I don't even know what's Tim near Tim Allen Kalamazoo, didn't really believe but. in a fucking free market then, dude, because those coke heads just wanted their coke, and he was trying to provide that fucking service uh, for them. He was just trying to save his fucking ass at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and look, didn't care too much about them. As though. much as I love to shit on Tim Allen, I kind of don't blame him for rolling over. When uh, you're looking at a fucking life sentence and shit. I think most people are going to be like, okay, four years in prison or life in prison. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Hmm. And you know when they talk to him, that's pretty much how it was presented. It was like, roll or face life. I mean, maybe he would have got life, maybe he wouldn't. Maybe he got 20 years. But, I mean, he's vir- he's facing virtual life imprisonment. So, of course, he's going to fucking cut a deal like 99.9% uh, of people are going are, to do. If you guys are interested, I do have some additional details on this Tim Allen cocaine thing. Yeah, let's, let's take yeah. a look at that. Uh, oops, that's the wrong one. He did not have to wait long. On October 2nd, Tim tossed a brown Adidas gym bag containing, sorry, one and a half pounds of cocaine into his Nova and drove to the Kalamazoo airport where Pfeiffer was waiting for him with $42,000. Allen had chosen the airport as the spot of the meeting after seeing a similar scene on television. You know, TJ, you mentioned that Nova. Oh, man, what a car that was, man. Oh, God. Oh, oh, God. Put the pedal to the metal. Shut up, Tim. This deal made me more uncomfortable than previous ones, however. Uh, Made him more uncomfortable. The stakes were raised, money was involved, and the risks were greater. When Allen and a partner arrived at the airport, they placed the cocaine in a locker, Walked over to where Pfeiffer was standing. Pfeiffer was an undercover police officer, by the way. Pfeiffer took the locker key from Allen, walked to the locker, removed the drugs. Suddenly, the entire area swarmed with a dozen undercover state troopers who surrounded Allen and his partner. The next thing I observed, Allen later told the Detroit Free Press, was a gun in my face. Yep. Um, and uh, then he fucking rolled on all those people. Yep, but that's the, I don't blame him. So his fucking his drug plan was let's go to the airport because he'd seen it on the movies because he'd seen it on a TV show basically. Like oh, did you see a lot of drug busts going on TV shows well, too? I, I According would, to TV, the airport is the ideal spot. But to I meet would say the cocaine deal. The attitude we have towards airports now and then is was probably a lot different. Way true. different, very different. You know, I mean, like obviously in the post nine eleven American landscape, no one would go to an airport to do a drug deal. But I mean, he was making a deal with an undercover cop, so it really wouldn't have mattered too much where he did the. Fuck. Oh no, he was he was fucked at that point. I mean, but yeah, uh, people today probably would not go to an airport whether they saw that on TV or not. I wouldn't. Fuck no, dude. Like, like, like what? Like a field out in the middle of nowhere. There's a show I've I've watched called Locked Up Abroad, and so many people get busted smuggling drugs in airports, dude. It's unbelievable. Like, it's one of the worst places to go. Here's a funny thing. Everything, everything me and Paul saw about Tim Allen. Uh, it, it, he always says his first acting role was Home Improvement. Wrong. Right. That's the canon. But. That's actually not his first acting role. He was in a film in 1988 called Tropical Snow, which is actually about cocaine smuggling. Yeah. And 
I believe he plays a baggage handler at the fucking airport. So he might have been like auditioning that <laughs> Coke bust thing. Or was that before or after he got busted? This was Coke? Uh, this was 10 years. After. Yeah, much later. So he so he ended up playing a dude that was possibly involved in a Coke deal in an airport. Yeah. I don't know. I, I've never seen the movie. Yeah. I'm sure it's awful. But I, what I do know is he's credited as being a baggage handler. If you go to the I, uh, not even the IMDb page, if you go to the Wikipedia page for that movie, they, the only thing that they say about it is that it's about drug smuggling and that Tim Allen plays a baggage handler. Isn't it called like Tropical Snow or tropical something? Snow. Yeah, tropical yeah. Snow. Yeah, Tropical Snow. Yeah. Uh, Tim Allen is very kind of referential to his past. You can see it in a lot of his work where it's just kind of like he kind of just plays a, a slightly different version of himself in most times. In most instances, that's what you really see him doing. And that's kind of like he, he started off that way. And I'm sure he'll probably go out that so way. So the judge who sentenced him said, you know, after you get out, I bet you're going to be a successful comedian. Because I guess he was talking to the judge about how he wanted to be a comedian. He was charming, I guess. And the judge picked and up And the judge is charm. like, you are hilarious, sir. So, yes, go forth and be a comedian. Sir, I do grant you that you are quite funny. Uh, this, According to his biography, it says, upon his release, he had a new outlook on life, and on a dare from a friend, started his comedy career at Comedy Castle in Detroit. Later, he went on to do several cable specials, including Comedy's Dirtiest Dozen and Tim Allen, Men Are Pigs. I hope he kicked some money down dude. to that friend that made that dare, man. I don't even buy the dare story, dude. I think it's, a lot of times that the... Uh, yeah, it's, I think it's apocryphal shit. Yeah, exactly. It's just some shit that gets added later on to the mythos of, like, on a dare or on a whim, he bought the lottery ticket. You know, All it's right. always some bullshit. So, at this point, we can actually get into some of Tim Allen's stand-up comedy material because this is around the time it broke right right so we we're at the point in his career now when he started his stand-up okay so let's take a look at some of the stand-up he was doing Be prepared for riotous laughter so everyone get prepared to laugh oh yeah just get ready to laugh happy i got to bring my baby i have a new kid i brought my baby a six-month-old little bitch from hell she's with us now she has a yeah. daddy's girl Edgy. though she woke up Woke up this morning, looked at me, and went, ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, she, she did that. She, wow. Oh, she, she, so even <laughs> jokes about his kids <laughs> grunting were landing for this asshole. Yeah, it's like, my kid, my little kid was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, Tim, that's hilarious. Oh, oh God damn it, Tim. You Tim, so you're so original and funny. Funny. It's really yes, hard so to even funny. get into a headspace where this type of shit would be funny. The worst thing about having a little girl is all the women folks show up, you know. All the house, I get eight hens show up after the birth. Grandma shows up that. I will at this point remind everyone that Tim Allen's net worth is $80 million. Yeah, for his Jeez. comedy. Bitch, I hate her. <laughs> Hates his grandma? Uh, she's always bringing over stuff no one eats. Hey, try it. What is that? Oysters and raisins? What's in that thing? It's from the old country, damn it. Uh, Would you save it? What is that stuff? Tim Allen should be executed. Wow. So that was, even though it probably felt like about two hours just now, that was actually only 50 seconds of his uh, stand up material. 50 seconds of torture. I'm just looking at this fucking, this putz in front of me. He just like he, he he just comes off as a total doofus. He smile. He has this fake smile. I will on his point face. out that Scotty is also looking at himself right now. Wow. Oh shit, dude. Well, I'm looking at Tim Allen, TJ. How about that? I mean, you're I the biggest one on the screen, TJ. I watch that home shopping club. Oh, oh I got yeah. Tools from hell, come on that show. <laughs> the salesmen are good. Hey, folks, folks, folks. Eliminate the worry. Sharpening scissors at home. Uh. <laughs> Forget about That's that all he's got. Green. Yep. Uh, a major it's really there. just like setting up a, a something that happens to like everybody in their everyday life and inserting right? a grunt. So like, you ever, you ever get up in the late night and go to the bathroom and forget you didn't put the toilet seat down? Huh? And, then, and then you sit down and your butt hits the water and you're like, uh? <laughs> Oh, man, that's terrible, isn't it? Oh, no. My butt's wet, you know, from the toilet because I didn't put the toilet seat down. <laughs> what the fuck? Sorry, Paul. We can like you're getting grunts now. 
Oh, Dan Elza. Later shows up UPS. I'm waiting on the porch of that dog. For that the truck. many grunts of Tim Allen. Because I can hear UPS trucks. I swear to God. Ooh. Yeah, they got that big yeah, custom. You know, they got that the UPS uh, truck. Speaking of the, speaking of the devil, they got that big custom V8 flathead engine. You know, inline transmission. Man, you can hear them things coming from a mile away. I lo- I've never heard a UPS truck go. What the fuck is that? That doesn't even. That's not even a truck noise. Come on, T. You, you heard that? All he has is the grunt, T. When the when the UPS truck arrives, T. Danny goes. Oh, blah, 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 blah. It's Tim Allen. All right, hold on. Tim Allen. This is called Men or Pigs. Oh, uh, this is the one. This we is watched, kind of the dude. genesis yeah. of the grunt. I'm thrilled. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. The origin of the grunt. I'm not, thr- I'm not thrilled I'm to be here. This avocado. Not thing. to watch Tim Allen. I mean, everywhere. It's avocado this, avocado that. Everybody, you want an oh avocado with that? Oh, my God. Uh, I don't see. I'm just buying a shirt. I don't see the reason why. <laughs> Can this be any more generic and bland? When I just got home. I, I saw my family. There's, we have a lot. Seven boys, two girls. And I got to say, after being with my brothers, I realize that men are pigs. <laughs> just pigs. Absolute pigs. Right, women? Yeah. yeah. He's got to coax the yeah, woman response. It couldn't just come organically. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding, of course. I'm kidding. Nah, we're pigs. We're pigs. My mom raised seven little boys. Pigs, she called us. She always, little boys. You little pigs. You little red-butted monkey little pigs. I feel bad subjecting our audience to this. It, it's, I think it's necessary, though, to yeah, get an need, idea. I know, I know that it's necessary. I know they need to understand... What an injustice it is that this man was successful in life and entertainment. They're not the problem with Tim Allen's stand up is people kind of do these performances with these one liners and, and these jokes like this, but I just feel it fails because he doesn't really there's no real connection. He's doing a really tired shtick. He's just doing men versus women. This is boring. This is something that's been beaten to death. He's not really telling you any stories. He's not really entertaining you. I just feel like he's up there and he has a routine. And I just feel if there's any if there's any roadblocks for his routine, he would just kind of go. Huh? Yeah. If ever a joke doesn't land, he can just go. Oh no! And the whole fucking audience will just crack. The I just, who is the audience for Tim Allen? Because Tim Allen has been. That's kind of what I, I'm trying to figure out with all of this. Is people seem to actually have a connection with this guy. Like mainstream America embraced this person for fucking decades. I think like, it's the same reason that they liked George W. Bush because he looks like a dude that you'd want to go have a beer with. You know, like oh yeah, Tim Allen's like me. Look, he grunts and he shits his pants and he's an <laughs> every man. <laughs> Don't speak to me. Grunt like the pigs you are. <laughs> she figured that's how men should speak. <laughs> you don't believe your men grunt, do you? Give them a steak, honey. Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how this joke is supposed to land because dudes don't do that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, what is it? I've like, never, if, if, if I get a steak and someone fucking, <sighs> like, hey, how do you like that? How's that steak? I mean, I might be like, oh, you know, like, because I'm chewing or something, but I wouldn't be like, yeah. <laughs> you don't turn into a forest baboon when you're eating meat. You know what I mean? It doesn't even really land yeah. as a don't joke. Don't even need a fork and knife just fucking eating it. So Tim Allen is just inventing reality as he yeah. goes along. And we're supposed to laugh at the things that are funny that happen in Tim Allen's invented reality. You know, sometimes you stub your toe and you're like, flip it and do Yeah. Everybody you know how everyone relate. does that. You know, everyone's like, flip it and do that, That's also another failure of Tim Allen is that his comedic analysis of the average American male, I just feel falls flat even in this time period. Like, I think he's kind of resonating with some stuff, like when he talks about like, tools and cars and women. Obviously, there's a connection there, but he's not. Re- it's like I just feel like it's not really authentic. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, you, when you're listening to him, it's like like you said, he's making things up. Well, it's not you've, like you've heard it all before. Like everybody's heard a comedian get up and do, oh my wife's crazy, oh my mother-in-law is fucking crazy, oh I love cars. You know, like it's it's there's nothing personal about it. It just it feels like everything's invented on the fly. But I just don't feel like it's accurate. Like, you know, I feel like like for an audience to connect something, they have to really recognize that. That's why I'm saying, like, I, I guess there was a connection because he's, he's, he's kind of killing it with this audience, which I don't know how. I mean, I think most of the people probably have dementia now. They're probably <laughs> in, like, fucking senior, you know, advanced care homes. They did, probably can't wipe their own ass. I think they probably ass. had dementia then. Yeah, I'm saying. Well, I mean, that was, this shit. that was the early onset of yeah. it, though. I mean, by now, they're probably uh, just well, they're either dead or just well advanced into their condition. All right, let's take a little... 
a little bit said, more of a The only listen. reason men are alive is for lawn care and vehicle maintenance. <laughs> oh, no. Very true. Oh. I have a new lawn tractor. Yeah, I got the John Deere 160. Uh, you, you know, maybe it's maybe it, you know what? I have a theory now. Okay. Because maybe like it's so Your bad as to us. Maybe when you watched him out and you get so exasperated, you just like you start grunting, you start going, uh, uh. That like that's how I feel. DJ the other night, that's how I feel. Like I've never really wanted to grunt, but maybe that's what Tim, maybe Tim Allen is like tapping in some primal thing within us. Like I we, will say this: for as much as we make fun of the Tim Allen, uh, Paul yeah. now actually uses it as a legitimate form of Dude, humor in situations. I will, I will say that Tim Allen. That was his one fucking like. Even though it's it's a tired old shtick at this point, and it pretty much was from the beginning. It it made him a career, and I mean sometimes that's all you need. You just need one thing that people really just like. And Disney obviously really fucking loved Tim Allen's grunt. They loved that portrayal of the American male. That shit was real big back in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Uh, the man's a bumbling doofus that can't get anything done, always injuring himself, always trying some fucking project and failing horrible at, horribly at it. Like, that was a big seller for audiences, and Tim Allen was really kind of the spokesman for that. Yeah, we talked about, uh, too, earlier when we were discussing this episode, we talked about how, like, I felt the real representative representative of American males in this time period was Al Bundy. Oh, yeah. Way more than Tim Allen. Oh, like, he definitely was closer to the average American male in the 90s. Like, he really captured what I feel was a nine, kind of more of a 90s attitude. And he was interesting, too. He was, like, you know, a little dangerous and a little fucking uh, edgy and shit. Uh, Tim was just this vanilla buffoon that grunted like a baboon and hurt himself all the time. That was his shtick. How dare you say that? Men should love other men. Hug a man now and then. Kiss a man. Give him tongue. I don't care. Tim Allen I being very progressive here. The corner, you can blow a like I said, TJ, I think Tim Allen was trying to tell us something with his book. Hey, Bob, sorry about losing your job. Sit down, let me blow you. That'll make you feel better, buddy. There you go, dude. I think he's working his, his uh, id out here. <laughs> yeah. Well, he is dangerous, you know. Yeah, he's a very dangerous guy. Sit down. So, let me blow you, buddy. So I feel like we've probably uh, explored enough of Tim Allen's stand up for stand people up. to understand. I mean, we've certainly explored an, uh, more than I can stand in a sitting. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming our audience probably feels about the same way about this. I'm hoping they do, because if they're laughing their asses off at Tim Allen, this show ain't going to work. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're on the wrong fucking yeah, page. Yeah, I hope not. I hope for their sake. So hopefully they laughing. think that's as painfully unfunny as we all do. Yeah. Um, so you guys were talking about Al Bundy a minute ago. Now, Tim Allen, he got um, kind of big on this show, Home Improvement. Sure. I'll show a little picture of it here. There, it there is. they are. This is Tim Allen's sitcom show here the typical american family so this show ran from uh 1990 was it one to 1999 uh yes i think something like that it was a very it lasted eight seasons or seven or something uh, like extremely that. successful show i read the finale was watched by about 35 percent of the audiences that uh the nielsen uh, yeah the finale i think was uh, it was like the in the top 10 most watched yeah. tv finales of all time so very big show very influential show for my money fucking um al his fucking sidekick was funnier than him oh, by yeah. far easy the neighbor was funnier yep uh, that's borne out uh, when we were looking for for stuff for the show yeah because uh, paul you actually we actually got some al bundy clips and our initial um thought process was we'll show some lame ass tim allen jokes juxtaposed against some funny ass Al Bundy jokes so you could see who's really the fucking edgy funny fucking comedian there was a snag though yeah I, I, I went looking for like the best of Tim the tool man Taylor from home improvement and there are none Nobody has gone and even bothered to make a compilation of his joke. The only thing I could find was it was a compilation of all the accidents he got and into. And I just want to remind people okay. that we live in the age of 90s and 80s nostalgia where people just fucking can't get enough of this shit, can't get enough of their fucking the 90s, can't get enough of their fucking childhood, like reliving that. Millennials love that shit. Yeah. And, and, and this can't be found on YouTube. No. And not only that, this show was so popular. Number motherfucking one at one t point. 
one of the most watched series finales of all time. Huge show. Yep. Yeah. Hugely and, popular. Any, any kid that grew up in the 90s has heard of Home Improvement. I almost guarantee you. And we live in the you. age of fucking nostalgia, and a lot of that nostalgia is for the 90s. And yet there's not a... Paul could not find one compilation of Tim the Toolman Taylor's funniest fucking moments. Nope. He there, were, there were compilations for Wilson, the yep. neighbor. There, were comp, there was a compilation for Al, the sidekick. But nothing for Tim the Toolman Taylor, the central character of the, of the uh, show. And what does that fucking tell us? That he's just bland. He's a placeholder. He's there uh, for other people to play off of and nothing else. But isn't that kind of what like corporations like Disney really like at the end of the day? They want someone because Tim Allen is not dangerous. He's not an anarchist. He's not a rebel. He's the person that they know will be reliable. He'll show up. He'll do what he needs to do. He'll actually make the other people look good, but he's still the star because he's he's not going anywhere. Well, let's put a pin in this idea of him as the dangerous rebel for a second. Because okay. I wanted to show, now that we've seen some Tim Allen, let's watch, let's watch that fucking bland sitcom star bullshit out of our psyches with a fucking few clips from a, a decent fucking show from the 90s with an actually relatable father character. That sounds good. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. You don't have to tell Santa what you want for Christmas. You want a pair of breasts. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a grown-up woman. <laughs> Santa says, be happy with what you've got. The body of a young boy. <laughs> <laughs> Al Bundy's fucking great. That's See, beautiful. this holds up. This See, type of okay, humor. I, I want to say that in that 19 seconds that we just watched... We giggled there was more, more times. There was more funniness in that yeah. than in us combing over the fucking career of Tim Allen. Yep. I tried to pull the jokes from Tim Allen that got the biggest audience response, the knee slappers. <laughs> and this was just a random joke from Home Improvement. This was just Al Bundy doing what he did on every episode. All right, I'm going to play the shortest Tim Allen one that I can fucking find. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead. I don't have any of his Home Improvement stuff because, like I said, we just couldn't fucking find good shit. There isn't any. But here's some of his stand-up. Okay. Women are brilliant. Every woman knows how to do the weirdest thing right out of the bucket, boy. Every woman knows how to do that Hindu head wrap with a towel out of the shower. Oh, my God. Oh. 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 What a bland observation of yeah. comedy bit. couldn't blow that thing off that head? <laughs> Where is the insight here, Tim? That's that. like saying, like, like women like to gather in groups soldier. and talk. You ever notice that? It's like, <laughs> women, yeah. You know, you know, one of the funny things about women is they grow up with long hair, and they learn how to put that long hair up in a towel so that when they're older, it's real easy for them to do it. But men who didn't grow up with long hair, by and large, can't, can't do that <laughs> as easily. <laughs> oh, shit, man. Ruh, 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 ruh. It's Tim Allen. Ruh, right. ruh, ruh, ruh. Now here's uh, seven seconds of Al Bundy. Okay. It'll play. Take me away. Please, Al, touching, please. touching, honey. Now rub my feet. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't rub your feet if a genie popped out of me. <laughs> it's good. It's yeah. gold. It's perfect. Look at the look on his face. Like, he is doing an, an, a, a great job. He's sprawled out on the right. couch. I his just his delivery see. is beautiful. His facial expression I is I want to see... I think I just actually saw this, but I want to see Ed O'Neill fucking body slam fucking Tim Allen through a fucking table. <laughs> yeah, you just saw the entertainment equivalent of that. You did. I mean, it's like, it's painful. It's, it's just fucking painful. He's just got such a, it's such a great portrayal of the character. It's, you know, like this is what uh, the, the center of a sitcom should be. The lead dad on a, fa on a family sitcom. Everything out of his mouth is gold. It was so easy finding these clips of Al Bundy because every fucking clip montage is hilarious. Uh, give us some more Al, dude. All right. I want one more Al. I'll give you one, one more. One more Al, dude. Yes. One I, more. I concur on that one. He one more from Al. He peeped me last night. Oh. <laughs> he peeped you? <laughs> yes. It was horrible. <laughs> So how was it for you? <laughs> <laughs> See? I just love the facial expressions. This is Mar <laughs> Married with Children was a far superior show to fucking Home Improvement. These shows were available, you know, during the same time you know, period. This, this shitty th yeah, these, these ran head to head. The shitty thing is, 
Uh, and this is a total aside, but if you go back and try to watch Home Improvement, they like don't have the licensing rights to the fucking theme oh, song God. anymore. And they replaced it with this fucking abomination. And that needs to be fixed. Yeah. You you have to hear that love and marriage. If you don't hear that at the beginning, it's, it's I don't know. It's, it's, it's still a, perfect, a good show, but it's the perfect fucking yeah. intro. And now they replace it with some. It's like, <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop. Netflix, stop it. Netflix and all you other services stop. I don't even know if the DVDs have the original. I bet fucking you the music. The DVDs probably do. I'm glad to get. It's horrible. It's horrible. Um, but yeah, it's 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 fucking it's shit. Uh, that has nothing to do with Back anything. Back to Tim Dick. So uh, let's talk a little bit about Tim Allen's movie career. Okay. Because he was an enormous smash success on television. His movie career is really where the momentum. I mean, it was there for a while. Yeah. But it really kind of faded over time. Let's take a look at some of that shit. Uh, let's just talk briefly about some of Tim Allen's uh, uh, films here. Sure. Uh, that's not one of them. <laughs> here I we wish. go. Uh, the Santa Claus. Now, we've already kind of talked about this one a little bit. Um, well, what's the premise if people have not heard of or so seen this movie? So the premise of this movie is that Tim Allen fucking murders Santa Claus. <laughs> And so takes his place. I mean, okay, he doesn't actually murder him. It's questionable what happens. Santa's yeah. up on the fucking roof. Tim Allen comes out and says, hey, what are you doing up there? Santa gets freaked and falls off the roof, dies. <laughs> In his suit, Tim Allen finds this card and says, you're the new Santa now. It's the Santa Claus. The Santa Claus. <laughs> so yeah. anybody that's, uh, that kills Santa becomes Santa? I yes. Guess. So what if Santa had been butchered by some horrifying, like, serial killer monster tattooed up and pierced dude, and Well, weird. then that would be the that's new Santa. Santa. Wow. Dude, it's like Highlander, dude. There can only be one. Well, in the there terms of the movie, I kind of no, wish that it one. had been a serial killer that killed Santa because uh, instead it's Tim Allen, and we got to spend an entire movie with him. Uh, it's painful. It's not a fun movie. Uh, it's not even a, a, a great Christmas film. I tried to rewatch it recently. As I said, it was unfucking watchable. I refuse to attempt. This to is a really it. lazy, like kind of like photo shoot too. It's like they're gonna put some fucking Christmas lights I mean, on him. That, those aren't even on him. That they just photoshopped his head on that shit. And it, you know, it looks like his face. He had that surprised, constantly surprised by what was going on. Faye. It looks like he's right at the end oh, of a grunt. You know what? Show TJ. Show the other. Uh, Christmas movie. Uh, do you have a picture of that one pulled up like Christmas with the cranks? Uh, yeah, I got it. Just show the face too. The, it's like, the, the, yep. Yeah. Yet again, face. he always looks sh like like he's just like completely perplexed and uh, shocked by what's going on. Uh, I don't really remember much more about it, so we'll move on to the next one. Toy Story. Uh, now, if t <laughs> this is probably Tim Allen's. Uh, it's not my favorite role of his, but this is probably his most notable role, honestly. Oh, yeah, for sure. And this is the one that because n no one wants a fucking weird new voice for fucking Buzz Lightyear, as long as they're making cash grab sequels to this shit, he's, he's gonna, got work. Yeah, he's going to be because he, he is Buzz Lightyear. And he's in Buzz Lightyear's not only in these movies, he's in little uh, TV shorts, video games, video games, theme park rides, all kinds of stuff. Dolls. Every one of those things that uses his voice is paying him in some way, shape or form. Well, at the time when Toy Story came out, I mean, it wasn't like we, it wasn't like, you know, how we view these movies uh, today. It wasn't like, OK, these movies generally do pretty well. Toy Story was a big gamble uh, at the time for Pixar before it was owned by Disney. Yeah, because no one knew how this yeah. this uh, 3D animation. Yeah, people shit were kind of like. Work I, I remember this when this movie came out. People were like, "This looks weird. I don't know if I want to see this. This is kind of just strange. Like, why is it animated like this?" But then people love this fucking. This is one of the most beloved, you know, cartoon or animated movies of all time. Yeah, absolutely, and it's a good one. I'm not it gonna. I'm not gonna oh, shit no. on the Toy Story. I, I love Toy Story. Yeah. It's a great movie. It shouldn't be shit on. Uh, you know, I I feel like it really did. I mean, I know a lot of people love Toy Story three. I don't like it personally. To me, the concept was done. I did like the second one. I don't remember much about it. I remember way better the plot of the first oh, one. Oh, I remember the plot to this one, yeah. Uh, now, what did Tim Allen contribute to this? Uh, was he their first choice to play the toy? No, he actually was not. Uh, I think he was the third choice. Yeah, I, uh, I remember reading that. Um, I don't remember who the first two choices were. They weren't him. 
Um, I think it was was it Bill Murray? Uh, no, Bill something? Murray was Bill Murray was actually or was that pre- another role preferred for him? Both, for the Santa Claus. The Santa Claus That's what Bill Murray was, was initially for. written for Bill Murray. Bill Murray said, "No, the Santa Claus is a pile of shit. I'm not being in wisely." That. Wisely decided not didn't to do, do that. that for Garfield, though. But um, no, I mean, Tim Allen's OK in this movie. I'm not going to really say he has a horrible performance. I mean, Buzz Lightyear is a kind of a memorable character. Uh, you know, he ha- Tim Allen, for, for what you want to say about him, he does have uh, an interesting voice. It's probably why he's gotten so much commercial work later in his career. We can get into that yeah. later. Sure. Uh, Galaxy Quest. Now, this actually is my favorite Tim Allen movie. And I will say that even though he's part of an ensemble cast here, as he usually is. It's a great ensemble, hits, too. Let's uh, be honest. He actually does do a pretty fucking good job here. Now, what does he play in this? He plays a washed up actor who's... Uh, glory days are well behind him. So Tim Allen plays himself. Uh, he wasn't. That wasn't really who he was at the time that he shot this. But it's kind of. I don't know. Maybe this role prepared him for his life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say he was washed up, but I would say that. I mean, I always. I felt like Tim Allen is all these things at once. I think he was successful. He was washed up at the same time because the, all the roles he ever really did, with few exceptions like Toy Story and this one, but most of the ones you're going to list, he, he didn't really ever do anything beyond that. Like, he, like no, and even in this movie, he's okay in this movie, but really, you have Alan Rickman, you have other people who are doing a great job. Yeah, you got Tony Shalhoub, you got fucking Sigourney Weaver. Yeah, you have a really good supporting cast that's really propping you Tim Allen You got some black dude, you know, some black dude yeah, and some bla- white dude about Yeah, there. there's some other people. Isn't that uh, David Arquette or some shit? Is it? Is it? I, no, I don't think, I think so. Maybe, I think the, maybe it's the other Ar- Arquette. I, I don't think it's. Um, I'm trying. To, I don't know his name. Well, let's not get caught up on that. But it, it, this is a funny ass movie. See it if you. Uh, it, a lot of people have actually said that they consider this to be a better Star Trek films than many of the Star Trek films that were uh, actually made as official Star Trek things. I, I mean, it definitely captures that feel and, really well. Uh, I kind of have to agree. It is a better Star Trek movie than quite a few of the Star Trek what does movies. God need with a starship. Uh, don't remind me of that one. Don't let William Shatner direct things, Hollywood. Yeah, don't, just don't let it happen. That's uh, Star Trek Okay, four. now we're getting into the real dog oh, shit. Oh, no. This is yet another movie that was financially successful. This is Wild Hogs, in case anyone doesn't know. A movie, Another movie with a big ensemble cast. In fact, the only movie you can find that Tim Allen had any success where he was the true lead man and not part of an ensemble is probably the Santa Claus. Uh, this movie, he, they teamed him up with Martin Lawrence, uh, John Travolta, and most bizarrely to me, William H. Macy. Yeah, really weird choice to throw him in there. You know, I actually think it makes sense for, simply for the reason that, like, Martin Lawrence is, is the fucking token black guy. John Travolta, I mean, he wasn't, he was kind of lower in his career at this point, too. He's kind of risen back up a little bit. Uh, Tim Allen is just the place where, like you said, but William H. Macy can, he can actually act for one. It doesn't matter because but you know what none I, of them could save this no. dog shit. But, movie. but you know why I think he makes sense just to wrap that up is just that he's kind of like supposed to be like the dork of the group or it's like they're supposed to be more uh, like what doesn't make sense to me is why William H. Macy took this shitty role. Yeah. He's yeah. he's uh, in my opinion the best actor on the screen here. Oh yeah. Oh I mean I easily agree. to me. I and mean, to take the, the comic in, relief, you know, right, here's effeminate. If you have to dork rank if you have to rank them though. Rank the people up here. Yeah, I would say because I, I go William H Macy and then I go John Travolta, yep. but then I don't know who to go to between Martin Lawrence. Martin and Tim Lawrence. Allen. Yeah, I would go Martin Lawrence because he's know. actually been funny in things. Yeah, he has been. Yeah, he's his stand up was funny back in the day, and he's been funny in quite a few movies. He, he is a Spitfire personality. He has he has a person that can actually connect with really connect with the audience and get them pumping. He, like that's why he got now he it, too is a has been just like Tim. Yeah. Allen. Oh he yeah. Too had a sitcom in the nineties, the Martin Lawrence show which I actually like better in retrospect than uh, Home Improvement. Well, Martin Lawrence is kind of the same story as Tim Allen, just a little bit better. He's just kind of a one-note person. He has a shtick, and then once you've kind of heard it, it's like, do you have anything else? And it's like, I'm angry, and I talk like this. And you're just like, a better, okay. blacker Tim Allen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't want to spend too long on this one. I don't really remember much about it. But I, this actually was, uh, I think, a small hit. Um, Christmas with the Cranks, yet another Christmas film. He apparently really likes doing those. Um, they're, they're huge cash grabs. And I mean, he, he did a lot of work with Disney uh, as well. So, I mean, when you work with Disney, Disney really likes to cash on holidays because it's easy money. Mm. I'm not sure who produced this one or, uh, or anything now about Now, the it, plot of this movie, I don't know if this is a Disney film or not. The plot of this film is uh, the, you know, once again with Sigourney Weaver, too. Um, him and his wife decide they're not going to celebrate Christmas. 
and they decide, oh, we're, we're not going to do that. We're going to go to the Bahamas or some shit. Good choice. Oh, okay. I'm remembering this and movie then now. The entire town hates him, hates them for it, and berates them and harasses them, and tries to basically like force them into the Christmas spirit. And then eventually, at some point in the movie, they finally break them and go over the top. Yeah. And they decide, and then they fucking go super Christmassy. So it's basically a movie that advocates. Hey, your neighbor's not showing enough holiday spirit. Fucking just berate them mercilessly, and eventually they'll cave. You know, I, I used to not like Christmas, but then my, my neighbor showed me the power of Christmas, and I was like, uh? My neighbors formed an angry mob and came to my door and threatened my life, and suddenly I loved Christmas. The end. It kind of sounds like um, some crazy Islamists took over Christmas and are just trying to force Tim Allen to just enjoy Christmas. Like, he, all he wanted to do was go to the Bahamas. But then, you know, the funny thing is he just totally caves in. He caves in immediately, kind of like Tim Allen's done his whole fucking career, and just goes the easy route. Like, see, this, this is the problem with Tim Allen, is that... He must have read the script and went, okay, this is good. People are going to really love this. So, like, I think Tim Allen's someone that approaches movies is, how much money can I make and how many people are going to see this? And he's hoping that these – because, like, holiday movies have have a special kind of thing. If you have a big holiday movie, it can become a uh, fucking tradition. And people watch that shit over and over and over. That's why there's three of those shitty Santa Claus movies. Yes, yes. Well, the first Santa Claus kind of has that status a little bit. Okay. I, I the, can't take that from it. It does have it to some degree. The first one at least has this thing yeah. of it's a unique concept. What if you became Santa Claus? Wow. But I hope, then, I, I hope I don't. But then in the, the two sequels, he's already Santa Claus. So what's the big fucking deal even? It's just, hey, Tim Allen's playing Santa again. More hijinks, more grunts. Does he grunt in the Santa Claus? I'm sure. I'm sure. Look, if it's Tim Allen, he probably grunts in just about everything he's fucking. Well, they're banking on him at that point, doing the grunt. I think he's he's there. They want that. I think he's leaned a little bit less on the grunt. Does he go like hard with it? Does he go like ho ho? (laughs) Does he? Does he? Does he give it that 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 uh, amount of oomph? I don't know. The grunt. Uh, You know, the funny thing is, is like he's got the background of a dude. That could do edgy comedy, you know, former coke dealer. All right, well, let's talk about, since we've seen his stand-up and we've talked a little bit about his movies, let's talk about Tim Allen, the edgelord. Dangerous. Edgy Tim Allen. All right, so let's listen to a few things here. Because this is a recurring motif. Standing is one of the only shows that touches upon politics in prime time. You, you throw a lot of uh, jokes at Democrats, uh, more than Republicans. Do you write those jokes yourself? Some of it's, it's an attitude. I'm more of an uh, anarchist because I'm a stand-up comic. I, I don't like anybody telling me what to do. And lately, the left wants to tell everybody, it's, it's the we all know this, you should, you should. Stop <laughs> telling me what to do. You go do it. You want to support stuff that the, the, the government there, should stay out so of? Many you don't do it. No one's stopping you from paying more taxes. I've got. Then that's the What's attitude you I get. You more see my taxes on, on the road. Okay, or, Tim Allen. I don't know if Tim Allen has has even read a fucking uh, you know a magazine or a newspaper or went online in the last twenty years, but. I would say that, one, both sides are guilty of trying to tell people what to do. Uh, let's take a perfect example of the right. Uh, hmm, could it be all— No abortions. Mo- yeah, no abortions, drug laws, uh, prohibition on marijuana, trying to fucking basically regulate everything they don't like to death. And, I mean, yeah, I, I, like, I understand that both sides of that are kind of guilty of that. But this, for Tim, I want to say he's an anarchist. I don't think well, it's an apt description. Hold on, descri- a hold on now, because this not this is not a one time thing where he just like it just slipped out of his mouth. No, this is this is Tim Allen as he thinks about himself. But he, he's, yeah, a self, he's a self he's a self professed uh, professed that's conservative. How, so how can he be an me. anarchist? Like, hold up. I'm really an anarchist. That's how, that's how I look at it. As comedians, I don't like anybody tell me what to do. Period. I know, but people still object. So he's got so this like nothing more dangerous to me, especially in this climate, than a funny, uh, likable conservative. So he's, he, he really likes to think of himself, instead of just being a dude that's cashing in on an open market. Uh, Hold on, we got one more example of his danger. Oh, okay. I was invited by, uh, we did a VIP thing for the, the vets and went to the Veterans Ball, and so I went to go see the Democrats and Republicans. Yeah, I went to the inauguration. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Well, I- this, is him defend, this is him defending himself uh, after being 
you know, someone a, a Trump Jim, supporter. Jimmy Kimmel is like, oh, you you went to the Trump inauguration, and he gets real defensive about it. You, you get this town. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You got to be real careful around right here. You know, you get beat up if you don't believe what everybody believes. This is like. 30s German. Jimmy <laughs> Kimmel's. If you don't believe fake what everyone golf believes, laugh. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't believe what everyone believes, this is 1930s Germany. So he really wants for conservatives. He wants people so, to think that there's an element of danger to his act. He's an anarchist. Yes. He's dangerous. He's a, a, he's one of these faggots that goes around saying shit like conservatism is the new counterculture. Dude, he's, he's the real Milo, dude. He's the fucking, he's the true dangerous faggot. Yeah. So, Tim, I mean, Tim I just want to say to Tim Allen, like, you're about as edgy as a fucking stick of butter. <laughs> yeah. Like, you <laughs> fucking, you're not dangerous. You're not edgy. You're not fucking even remotely in the fucking ballpark of being a fucking anarchist. We just spent as much time as we could possibly stand trying to unpack your humor. And from what we can tell, it's all just rote, derivative, fucking referential, observational humor. Yeah, no one here is like, oh my God, he's, I mean, like, it's the danger factor. Oh, he's just so offensive to me. The only thing that's offensive about it, Tim, is how fucking awful it is. Yeah, and how, and how it cheapens, uh, you know, the careers of comics that actually were edgy and anarchistic and, yeah. and dangerous. Well, I mean, you want to see a dangerous fucking comedian? George Carlin, Bill Hicks, Richard Pryor. Doug Stanhope, but that's uh, fucking uh, Lenny, Bruce. Lenny Bruce. But that's the strategy that Eddie Tim Allen, Murphy back in the day. But it's kind of like what you, what you do as an entertainer. You try to sell something to somebody. So if he goes out there and is like, I'm a bland, generic, boring, derivative fuck, people are going to go, eh. He has to go out, okay, I'm dangerous. But, I'm well, look, but he could just go out there. But he's building it. himself as being directly opposed to the, like, basically, he's like, look, I'm a fucking conservative in the, in the sea of liberals. I'm the one standing up and telling people the truth. I'm telling it like it is. These people are just trying to tell me what to do. I'm, I'm like, hey, live and let live. Do what you want. There's nothing, but this is what I'm doing. There's nothing dangerous or anarchistic about it. Well, of course him. not. If he wants to say, like, look, I'm, a, I'm the everyman and I'm the fucking silent majority. But the argument he's I'm making is, is that people, he's dangerous in Hollywood, you know? No, that's what he's, I think that's what he's, he's trying to go for is that he's really dangerous. He's, he's right, going against but Hollywood the system. Is, but Hollywood is paying his fucking bills, so clearly he's not all that dangerous. Of if not. he was really dangerous to Hollywood, he'd be homeless. He's the, a, Will Grunt for one dollar, you know what I mean? Standing on Santa Monica Boulevard with a big <laughs> fucking grizzly beard. <laughs> oh, he's, he's an in, he's an insider that, that plays the outsider. He's totally he's always been connected. I mean, maybe now at the waning years of his career, he's not as uh, connected. Or anarchists he's, don't what? support Trump. Okay, anarchists no. don't support. His original choice was Kasich, and yeah. then he moved on to Trump. Like, that's not a fucking anarchist. And dangerous comedians don't do long-ass bits about how much they like cars and how well their wives can wrap their hair up in a towel. That's yeah. not That's not really... If they do, it's taken to a place that's actually dangerous, that's actually controversial. It's not just thrown out there as a piece of observation, followed up with a grunt and hope that people will laugh. <laughs> You know, my wife can really wrap her head in that towel. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> all right. So here's, uh, so we're talking about his political views. Well, Let's a, take a look uh, at this. Uh, here's here's we're talking to Hannity. I like problem solving. And problem solving usually originates from my family. We, I, I, there's nine kids and my um, uh, single mom for a while. And it, a lot of it was about how are we going to pay for this? And that just, our, my family's all about that. How are you going to pay for it? Any idea? It, in my neighborhood in uh, North Hollywood, we've wanted to get trees put in. And it, here in Communist California, it's difficult because there's so many regulations. But you can get stuff done. We planted trees, got our street cleaned up, and our councilman. He was the Wait guy a minute. That Wasn't, it. Isn't and that a refutation of the, of the constant, with, uh, like, Republican narrative it. that, like, you can't get anything done because of the red tape in California? Well, you know, he... he, he he had to pull some strings. Dude. Yeah, yeah, but you can get stuff Over done. Over there in commie you just California. Gotta, you just got to abide by regulations and stuff, but then you, you, you get it done anyway. Well, that's, you know, also, if he has such an issue with California's laws and how the state, it's a liberal state, I mean, he's very wealthy. He could live wherever he wants to in the world. I mean, He wants to live in, in California. Yeah, he, that, he wants to live. That's what I'm saying. So on one side of his mouth, he's going, I hate all these liberal, this liberal bullshit trying to tell me what to do. On the other side, I, you know, he obviously enjoys it. He's been in the entertainment business for fucking decades. He's made his fucking fortune there in Hollywood. I mean, he's uh, he, he's been connected with some of the biggest names in uh, the production of movies and film. Yeah, I mean, you, you I mean, said television. earlier, he's, the, he's playing the insider outsider game yeah he's he's not he's not on the outside tim allen is very much on the inside um tim allen 
Uh, you see here a clip from this show, Last Man Standing. Now, there's some interesting uh, controversy about Last Man Standing because um, he basically returned to ABC, his uh, his same network that did Home Improvement, uh, 2011. Uh, basically, the trajectory was he was a huge stand-up comedian. He became a huge sitcom star. He kind of... Seemed like he might have a big movie career, but then it, that kind of fizzled out. You know, he just didn't work on the big screen. So he went back to television in 2011 uh, with his show Last Man Standing. He played the role of Mike Baxter, a conservative father fighting for his manhood in a house filled with women. That's the so, premise. Right. Uh, the character is loosely based on his own life as a Republican father of three girls. Okay, whatever. After six seasons... And this is where the controversy comes in. The show was canceled in May of 2017. ABC Entertainment Chief Channing Dungy denied claims of political bias against Allen, explaining that the network simply could not accommodate the program on their schedule. Okay. Uh, I do have a few clips pertaining about this. Here is uh, him on Norm McDonald's uh, live. Okay. Talking about this issue. Last I mean, I will yes. I will give him that. That does seem awfully that, that doesn't really make much sense. If something's doing doing really well, I mean, why would you cancel it? Uh, well, the thing about it is, is that this uh, Channing Dungy, mm-hmm. the ABC entertainment chief, uh, she's a uh, black woman. She said after Trump's election and remember this, this show was canceled very shortly after Trump was elected and after Allen himself had attended the inauguration. Um, yeah, she said that, uh, because of Trump's win, she was reevaluating some of the programs on the network. Okay. Uh, and then she, shortly after she said that she canceled this one. And then when people said, oh, it's because he's conservative. She said, oh no, it had nothing to do with that. I think it's pretty clear that that's I think what it's happened. pretty yeah. fucking clear that that did have something to do with In it. In the wake of Trump winning all of these, um, you know, uh, broadcast networks that had set themselves up in opposition to Trump with their news coverage and shit, uh, didn't want a conservative friendly voice in a good time slot. I mean, that's just obviously what happened because yeah. there were shows that were doing piss poor that uh, in comparison that didn't get canceled that some, some of which are still on. And now there were some other factors at play. Now it was a show going from season six to season seven. Usually that is uh, usually the season six to season seven period is if you see big contract renegotiations, that's usually when they happen. So they might have been scared of that extra expense. Uh, The show, even though it was uh, on ABC, was being produced by 20th Century Fox. I don't understand that mess, but that... So they were just licensing it to ABC, so that's an additional... So that was an additional cost to the production. So there were maybe some other factors here. But, I mean, look... But it's kind of without a doubt in my mind that this was one of the factors. Well, 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 any network television show is about eyeballs because it's selling the advertising. I mean, yeah, there's other residual incomes, like there's DVDs and online. Sales and well, stuff, that's another thing: is the audience for the show skewed a bit older? Oh, I mean, obviously, sure. Like conservatives skew a bit older. Mm-hmm. That's right. But I, I mean, I have to say that I honestly do side with him, Alan. Just on at least on that point, I think that was why they canceled the show. I mean, you, I mean, look at their network; they can do whatever they want. They they don't have to put them on television to begin with. I mean, I think they should at least come out and say it. I don't got a problem with them putting whatever dumbass shows they want to put on their stupid yeah. fucking network. I don't watch, watch anyways. But yeah. <laughs> You know, I ain't like, watching no ABC comedies anyway. Yeah. At the very least, come out and be ballsy enough to say, like, yeah, dude, you know, in the wake of all this rise in conservative thought and this big wave of, uh, you know, conservative outreach going on with the election of Trump, we didn't want to position ourselves in a place that was going to add strength to that. Because that's not... Uh, a- I tell you what, I had to be able to hit that. Yeah, that was a great show. <laughs> the point he's trying to make is that uh, they canceled all these uh, rural themed shows because they felt that it was an embarrassment to the network. Okay. Uh, basically, the, these companies that are in the entertainment, entertainment business, I mean, sometimes the people in charge are just about money and ratings. Other times, they do have a set of values they're trying to push or a, a personal set of sensibilities that they bring to the job. I think it's pretty obvious that this woman, Channing Dungy, 
did look at this show and say, do I want to, I mean, a, a, a show starring a conservative is a cute novelty to her mind in the age of Obama, but in the age of Trump, it's dangerous. She, yeah, she's, she, it, it, whether it's dangerous or not, she views it as dangerous. Right. Um, so maybe Tim Allen has a bit of a point on saying he's dangerous in that sense, in that scenario. Well, they're treating the, in this case, it seems like they're treating him that way, but I don't think he's dangerous. I don't think having a show with conservatives on it is dangerous. I don't think any liberal is watching that show and saying, well, goddamn, I'm going to become a conservative I mean, these are very family-friendly, mild shows we're talking about. Like, Last Man Standing is pretty much like, what, PG-rated kind of like TV, you know, 12 or whatever it is, the kind of the middle one. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not an edgy show. No. I mean, it's like everything else Tim Allen does. It's bland dog shit. Yep. (laughs) He's even got, like, a running gag on that show where he'll, like, review a different man product vlog style as part of the show. Like, this is my knife of the week. Oh, man, look at that steel blade. All steel blade goes right up into the handle. This baby's not going to slip. You know what yeah, I'm talking I about? I guess he was some kind of vlogger in that show. Well, he owned like a, uh, I looked into it. He owns like a sporting goods place and does a weekly blog trying to sell people on an item in the sporting goods place. That's how he makes his dough in the okay. oh God. In the world of so last man t- standing. A, a typical Tim Allen fantasy career. Kind a of very, thing. very similar to Tim the Tool Man Taylor. In it's that basically way. just a, a soft, modern. a soft re- Reboot of Home Improvement with girls instead of boys. Yep. That's all it is. Okay. Same man versus woman, man no understand, you know. Well, Tim Allen stopped developing his routine in the 80s, so... I mean, that, that is true. I mean, there you go. I mean, he hasn't changed much in 30 fucking years. Uh, that pretty much brings us up to speed with where Tim Allen is now. He doesn't have a show anymore. It doesn't look like there's any big film prospects on the on the horizon. Other so. than Toy Story, which is Toy Story be an Four, ongoing yeah, of course. Cash cow for Disney. There is going to be a Toy Story Four, so, so I guess he's he going to be doing that. fine. Uh, and he's already got enough money. Even if he does, if he never got another role for the he's rest of his life. life, he's set. I mean, he's an avid car collector. I mean, there's a I don't know if we have the uh, clip, but it's just him walking through this massive garage, and he lives in a very. I mean, he lives in Los Angeles. He lives in a huge, you know, high cost of living area, and he has a fucking massive garage. I mean, he probably lives in a five or ten million dollar fucking estate yeah he claims in that interview that he owns all of the cars that he had little models of when he was a kid he went and got all the classic cars that he used to build yes. models of so according to what's this website tj uh this is bankrate.com i went to a bunch of other sites i didn't find any other site that listed any other net worth for him everyone agrees his net worth is 80 million dollars um so uh, we could talk at this point about some of Tim Allen's uh, famous quotes because he's got some big quotes on um, on his IMDb page. Okay. I don't have it up, but I'll go ahead and just read them to you. Uh, women now have choices. They can be married, not married, have a job, not have a job, be married with children, which is a better show than you ever could do, unmarried with children. Men have the same choice we've always had, work or prison. It's a very MGTOW kind of mentality there. Uh, For a guy that has spent his entire career trying to make, make men look like ignorant, accident prone buffoons that can't fucking do anything right. It's a very pro man statement there. Uh, Here is Tim Allen on uh, philosophy right here. (laughs) Oh, no. Uh, The world, the world's a mean place. It's unfair. Then it's fair. It's hateful. Then it's loving. It's a very peculiar place on philosophical and metaphysical and religious levels. So he says, he essentially says nothing. (laughs) He says, he says, you know. The world is just and it's unjust. It's you, you have good moments, you have bad moments. It's it's it just to me is a nothing state. When people say shit like that, it's kind of just like it's okay. a bunch of empty headed yeah, fucking. It's just yeah. it's just some fucking like basic recognition of reality. Like there's different things that happen in our reality. Metaphysical. It's like, it's like okay, cool, awesome. Thanks for the fucking update. Dad needs to. I'm sorry. Dad needs to show an incredible amount of respect and humor and friendship towards his mate, so the kids understand their parents are sexy 
What? I'm just going to pause there for a read second. Read that again. Whoa, whoa. Read this again. This yeah, is hold disturbing. On. Dad needs to show an incredible amount of respect and humor and friendship towards his mate so the kids understand their parents are sexy. What? Now, that's not the whole quote, but I feel like I needed to stop there just to emphasize that. Yeah. Uh, they're sexy. They're fun. They do uh, things together. They're best friends. Kids learn by example. If I respect mom, they're going to respect mom. Why do they need to think mom is sexy? Yeah, has anyone her? here ever thought their parents were sexy? Just a I've, show of no. hands. I've never. Show of I, hands. Why did you have to say that while I was raising my hand? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was great, dude. You son of a bitch. Uh, just by a show of hands, CJ, who said... Uh, uh, your hand was up, dude. I mean, I'm not just Listen, putting it out there. Don't fucking like your your kids do not need to think that you or your wife are sexy. No. Now the rest of that's okay. Yeah, you yeah. want to be seen being friendly if with you your spouse. If you took the words "are sexy" out of there, and just if and just left it at fun, and they do things together, and they're best friends, those are all positive messages yeah, to send to your kids. Tim Allen is a really strange guy. When you actually get Tim Allen off the cuff. Like you, there's some really strange things he has said. Like, because right. usually he follows he like a routine. He doubles down on it in that quote now, too. Here's yeah, a, he does. Here's a real weird one too. Not quite as weird as the last one, but still a pretty fucking weird one. Okay. I don't understand why it has to be either, or, either socialism or democracy. Why can't we combine things to get the best of each system? Doesn't that sound like he's yeah, for like social democracy at that point. Once again, I yeah. think Tim Tim Allen's fucking conservative character slip is hanging, and everybody can see it. I don't, I don't, I don't think he's anywhere near as conservative as he makes himself out to be. I think that's how Tim Allen sells Tim Allen now. Yeah, I'm the I'm a I'm a dangerous lone wolf conservative voice and trying to fight against Hollywood. He gives he gives all these you know you know uh, Republican right wing type of people an avatar in Hollywood to project themselves onto. Maybe he just noticed that was the the slant of his audience, and he's like, me too. Because I can't imagine anybody that's a genuine fiscal conservative saying, hey, you know, why why can't we just take what's good about socialism and integrate it into our personal, you know, our current uh, system? Yeah, no. Here's another one. Not going to happen. Here's another comedy is anarchy thing. In marriage, and the, I don't understand how these two sentences are related. Okay. So here, here we go. Sentence one. In marriage, compromise nurtures the relationship. That's sentence number one. Okay. Sentence number two is, comedy is the ultimate anarchist. What? How the fuck do those things even I, relate to I each other? I could understand Tim Allen calling himself a libertarian, but calling yourself an anarchist is, is just totally different. But also, what is it... like? In marriage, compromise nurtures the relationship. Comedy is the ultimate anarchist. What is the fucking... That's yeah. a total non sequitur. No, Those two match. things don't have fucking jack shit to do with each other. And and on top of it, we, f we find Tim Allen again. Like, I agree with him. Comedy can be a great uh, platform for this kind of uh, deconstructive anarchist thought. You know, but, but he, he doesn't use he it that way. It. He ain't it. So, you know, you know, like this, this constantly talking about how comedy is dangerous and insinuating that by proxy he's dangerous because he voted for Trump is just silly. There's almost no one you could we could probably look at and examine in the last 20 or 30 years who's actually had a career in Hollywood that is more by the book, who is more fucking catering, banal, derivative, bland, and just is, is never really willing to go outside the box. Tim Allen had a, such a, his career is totally painted by the yeah. numbers. There's nothing unique about Tim Allen as a performer. There's nothing that really stands out aside from his grunt. He's Hollywood's version of a loaf of white wonder bread, dude. Yeah. <laughs> he was a, just a run-of-the-mill TV dad, cutesy little animation, fucking Christmas movies, then back to a TV dad again. Yeah, it's what just, is dangerous about that? It's the most tapioca pudding fucking <laughs> <laughs> career I've ever seen <laughs> in my entire life. Um... Here's a weird... I mean, Tim Allen all, is all over the place politically, too. I mean, it's like he's a conservative, but he's an anarchist, but he thinks some elements of socialism are good, and he wants to combine them with democracy, which makes him sound like a social democrat. Yeah. Like, where the fuck are you at, Tim Allen? I want to see your fucking... I want to sit down and watch you take dude, the goddamn political compass test, may, bitch. Maybe that's why he kind of likes Trump. He's kind of, like, all over the place like Trump. He makes statements, and then he contradicts himself, you know, mid-sentence, or, so, or, or, or doesn't connect. I think he like, likes Trump because it ingratiates him to the entire fucking here's conservative another, movement. Here's another thing of the... Well, uh, that's the obvious thing, but I think, I think digging a little deeper, it's 
like I can kind of almost see similarities when I actually look at this the way well, the way he talks with the way Trump talks. Like he kind of has a thought and then he pauses and says he pivots to something totally different, or yeah. it doesn't really it doesn't really follow. Like you follow the logic and like that doesn't really make sense. All right, listen to this because here's another one where to me the weird mask of Tim Allen's presented personality is kind of slipping here. I think he was a little more honest than he wanted to be. The big advantage to playing the Venetian in Las Vegas, where it's a beautiful theater, beautiful, is that unlike other places, even other nicer venues, even other nice venues, I can do a set and lighting cues. I could put on a real show. I could dress up, wear a tux. So this is. Does that this, sound like the the tool man, the no. grunting guy, Mr. Blue Collar, cars in his garage? I'm Mr. Blue Collar, fucking power tool comedy. No, he's talking about. It's such a nice venue. I love and it. And the lighting cues. And I could put on a big show with a tux. It's going to be fabulous. Yeah. I, I think I think Tim Allen is a wolf in sheep's clothing. After seeing all this evidence presented this way, I think that he's way more centrist than he likes to portray himself being. He just figured out a long time ago that there's a lot of fucking conservatives in the world that like to have a voice in Hollywood. And he's just, oh, I'll play that role. Uh, he's also a very religious man. Great. I don't know if you knew that about Tim Allen, but he's deeply fucking dude, religious. Maybe, dude, maybe that, in a sense, I'm sorry to interrupt that, but maybe that, in a sense, is the greatest role Tim Allen has ever played is pretending to be something he's not his entire career, which is like he doesn't really seem to be a conservative. He doesn't really seem to be a comedian. Like, I don't really know what Tim Allen is. At the end of the Tim day, Allen. like, yeah, it's like Tim Allen is just like this fucking person through it just seems that it's just like willing to uh, I, maybe Tim Allen is just the ultimate yes man like he just was able to get into Hollywood he was able to get here and just in, and to get into this position by just being like yeah I'll do it yeah I'll do it and then and then later on he just he, he saw that mainstream audience slipping so he's like okay now I'm gonna be this conservative guy because that's really where my fan base is oh you want to see some real edge I'll show you some All right, fucking, yeah let's I'll see show it. you some fucking edge bitch I'm ready some edge like you've never seen how are you getting to a happier place Running there? Danger. Anarchy. Anarchy. Dancing there. Flying there. Yeah. Wow, How can they show this commercial on TV? There. Delicious Campbell soups fill you Isn't with that the voice of Tim Allen, energy. the dangerous Farm fucking anarchist so that we've all heard about? Healthy weight. Helping you get to a happier place. Wow. Have a nice trip. I'm an Campbell. anarchist. Eat diet soup from Campbell's. You know, it's like, it's like 30s Germany here. I mean, people keep showing up and giving me Campbell's soup commercials. <laughs> you know, what? rounding me up and taking me to the fucking money house to shovel fucking handfuls of cash at me to yeah. chill their products. Let's take a look, though, at uh, Tim Allen's theology. Now, he doesn't call God God. He calls him the builder. The builder. Let's take a look. And he spends a lot of time working on that curious relationship with God. Or, as he says, the builder. Oh, my God. Honey, don't see God in church. Doesn't it sound I like he's in a ask. fucking Whoever goddamn cult, you know, like, we all worship the builder. The builder. The prime builder, you know, he wants us to build things with our hands. That's why I'm uh, fixing up this uh, 98 Deuce Coupe. Oh, my God. Uh, two, uh, oh, dual overhead cams, double barrel carburetor. Oh, yeah. Chrome wheels. Oh, yeah, the builder Ooh. loves chrome. Dude, this, so this interview is clearly like Tim Allen's, like, either the set or the house or whatever. And you see these, like, fucking, he has these ducks. It's like, I'm a manly man I hunt I'm a man. I fucking fish I'm a real American him and I bleed red white and blue boy he's almost as fake as Kid Rock but not quite mm -hmm. the builder what did you want me to do do you think people would be surprised to know how deeply religious you or spiritual you are well if you if you know me you know it I don't push it I just want a relationship with whoever built me this is too much, too weird that it happened by accident. It didn't happen by accident. I don't feel that it did. Men are well, good thing that there are scientists out you? there that aren't grunting fucking idiots to figure out how to fill in that stupid God of the Gaps argument. <laughs> yeah, you, you weren't built, Tim. If you knew anything about biology, there you were not. There was a fucking assembly line. Yeah, you, he, weren't, dude, you weren't just built by magic, dude. You were a product of your parents. I was, a staunch, atheist. I was a staunch atheist for most of my adult life, and then fucking I saw this interview with Tim Allen, where he said, this stuff is just too weird. <laughs> you know? I was like, you know what? Fuck this. Yep. The builder. It's too weird to explain. I now worship the builder. It's too weird to explain without inventing something just as weird, if not weirder, to have made it happen. All right. So The builder. So, uh, 
<laughs> the Buddha. <coughs> We've talked extensively about the grunt. Yes. Uh, let's take a deeper look inside the grunt, because believe it or not, this preposterous bag of shit was once on Inside the Actor's Studio with uh, James Lipton. Yep. Oh, no. I noted with interest in watching Men Are Pigs <laughs> that you emitted... You were interested in Men Are Pigs? That's surprising. Lexicon ...of grunts. Grunts. And those grunts are at least as expressive as speech. More to me. Yep. Since Pace is a university, and these are students, I wondered if you would give us a lesson. Inside the grunts. So we're all going to learn how to do the Tim okay, Allen so grunts. All right, let's hear them. An education in grunts. In grunting. Grunts. <laughs> Today, the important topic of grunts. Tim, tool man, whoever you are at this moment, <laughs> what sort of... That was pretty dismissive. Tim, tool man, whoever, I don't care. Grunting, white collar, blue collar, Look, idiot. We Just go ahead and do your fucking grunts. Disney, Disney you know, the, uh, the, uh, was it the CEO of Disney called and said, put Tim Allen on this fucking show. So we're putting Tim Allen on. Whoever you are, tell us the secret of grunting. He likes to grunt. Ask him about that. What do you talk to Tim Allen about in an other interview than format other than the grunts? I'm, I don't know, because I didn't have the courage to watch this whole thing. Expresses surprise. Oh. 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 Wow. Oh. Okay, so explain it, Tim. Break down the process that you go through as an actor. It's an acting exercise. Fright. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. That, that, was, that, that did not Tim. invoke fright in me I, I, when I saw what he just did. All right, everyone, everyone else take a crack at a frightened grunt. Uh, huh? <laughs> that doesn't sound frightened. Fuck you. Huh? Okay, what about this one? Uh, All right, yeah. yeah. That one frightened. frightened. That one nailed it. All right, cool. Frightened, nailed dude. It, that one. Got it. What about you, TJ? Let's hear your frightened grunt. My frightened grunt. <laughs> <laughs> no, but apparently, apparently I should have gone like... <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Oh, no. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> hideous. Ooh. Just hideous. All right. <laughs> Amusement. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> that's just that's just laughing. <laughs> Sympathy. Oh, that, oh, oh. oh no. no. Oh, I, I don't feel sympathy from that one. If I, it's just like okay. Just sympathy for us for watching this shit though. So, I guess I can't. I guess the the disadvantage of disabling that thing is I can't just go back in the clip. But well, I guess true. I could. I just gotta. Oh, I guess it's gone from this too. Never mind. Why not? Nope. We'll have to fix that in later episodes. We'll have to figure uh, out a solution. No. But I mean, just imagine the reaction he just gave, uh, being like his little, oh, 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 you know, like imagine someone's like, my child just died. Oh, 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 oh no, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. Oh, oh no. Oh, 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 Confusion. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> Why did he, that was the perfect moment to do your classic grunt, Tim. Yeah, he didn't do it all the way though. He's like, huh? He just went, huh? He's getting you're getting lazy, Tim. This is why you ain't making the big bucks no more. <laughs> <laughs> James Lipton is tickled uh, pink. James Lipton is fucking tickled. Admiration. Tim, you're so funny, Tim. <laughs> oh, I feel ashamed. <laughs> Appreciation. Ardor. Oh, I knew what that meant. Ardor. Ardor. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to. You're, you're gonna, gonna have, have to translate that one for Tim Allen. Mad. Thesaurus, anybody? Sad. <laughs> Let's skip Ardor and go straight to lust. Yeah. It's not like Grundy just went, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Timmy want. Yeah. Timmy Dick want real oh, bad. Yeah. Give me that pussy bitch. I think guys should be able to suck other guys' dicks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Hope a time comes along where your buddy's down about something, you just be like, let me blow you real quick. Yeah. You got yeah. shit can from the factory. Yeah. Little old Timmy Dick take care of that fucking cock. <laughs> uh? <laughs> Annoyance. Ah. Ah. Anger. <laughs> no. That's the worst anger. Wow. <laughs> you really suck at being mad, Tim. 
it worked. There's a difference. There's a difference. Subtle, but it's there. Nuance. Uh, no. No. There was no this subtle difference. This just shows you... <coughs> well, you know what? Uh, this is a brilliant piece, but simply because it reveals how little of the grunts he actually is. Like, it's like you can tell his grunts are just, they're not really coming from the, the place he's claiming they're coming from. It's just like, okay, I make this grunt noise and people like it. He's yeah. not, like, he has never really thought these grunts through. Because if he was really, if he really captured the grunt, like, he, I, I think he would have be able to do this. I don't know how much you can think through a shtick that's based around you going, uh, uh, uh. He but he's been doing it for Paul. I mean, that'd be like if you just uh, grunting was part of the Paul shit. I mean, the for whole premise years. here, the whole fucking premise here is James Lipton is like, you know, these grunts convey as much as words. And some of them have been kind of in the realm of what he was going for, but a Not lot as of them much have as just words. missed the but I'm saying he's really, mark. This guy is uh, fucking, he's really throwing Tim Allen a bone. And, the, and he's not picking up the fucking bone. He's just going to go in. Huh? 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 Well, <laughs> I think Tim doesn't like the grunts anymore. I couldn't find any modern grunting from Tim. I, I think he, he looks back with shame on the grunt. So maybe he's hoping that James Lipton will move on and, you know, go to some of his more, you know, sterling acting achievements. Oh, like <laughs> jungle to jungle? Jungle to jungle. That's one we didn't even talk about, but that also is awful. Uh, James yeah. Lipton, can't you ask me what it was like to work with Jonathan Taylor Thomas or something? Ooh. I mean, uh, there's, these grunts are kind of old. we sit around blowing dude. each other all day, I'd say, hey, it's not, it's, it's normal to blow your TV dad. I mean, I'm not your real dad. I'm your TV dad. He'd blow me and I'd go, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> so ended for less <laughs> <laughs> wow, there was an applause for that. A very, very mild applause, though. Speaking Golf of uh, DUIs for TV uh, sons, which we weren't, but here you go. Taryn Noah Smith, Mark Taylor. One-time actor Taryn Noah Smith, who played the youngest brother, Mark, said the biggest thing he had learned from his time on Home Improvement is that he absolutely didn't want to be an actor for the rest of his life. He uh, look at what he was looking up and to. And began running a company that produced vegan meals called Play Food before it was shut down by the city for allegedly operating illegally. Oh, Sadly, no. shit, dude. <laughs> he's uh -oh. faced what most yeah, get a business child actors do and has fallen into rough times. In 2012, he was arrested for DUI and possession of marijuana. And in 2015, his real life mother, Candy Benizzi, wrote the book Stardom Happens, which documented his life and gives readers an insight of what a child actor goes through so yeah it looks like home improvement just <coughs> chewed this kid up and spit him out and uh it's funny because uh, i wonder if he learned how to do dui from tim allen yeah watching tim allen sneak drinks before every show drive home all toasty every night in his fucking camaro <laughs> i look up to you tv dad hey tv dad haven't you had a few drinks on the show tonight no no i'm fine i'm fine uh, let's let's watch another Al Bundy clip to get this out of our fucking yeah. Here. Let's palate cleanser. This attitude, you're gonna be working here for the rest of your life. <laughs> well, take a gander into the seat next to you if you want to see what your future looks like. <laughs> Chocolate. It's not just for breakfast. Anymore. <laughs> These t-shirts that fat Come bitches wear in this show. Let's go someplace where they treat us with respect. Uh, try the moon, you're way less now. <laughs> 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 Fucking Al, dude. Uh, just classic dude, there was one of these dude. I pulled. Play another one, because there was one where he throws shade at home improvement. All right, let's see that. that might be the That's one. very touching, That's honey. not this one. Now rub my feet. We've seen this one. Al, well, nice wheels. But you have to realize, stealing cars is a felony. <laughs> so let's pretend to be that kid on home improvement. <laughs> Oh shit! Damn! Oh fuck! Jonathan dude. Taylor Thomas dissed. <laughs> you just got exploded, son. You just got Jonathan Taylor Tom dissed, bitch. I love that you know because they were on at the same times and shit. They were throwing you know th this show was great. Once again, it was it was an edgy show. It would get, they could throw shade at other network sh network shows and shit. This show was dangerous and edgy. And actually, the whole reason it got popular was because Christians tried to boycott it off the fucking air. Yep. yep. But it's and that made people go, "Oh, let me see what this is. Let's see what this this controversy is all about." And, and that got it big, love. and that fucking saved the fucking show. The people who tried to destroy the show actually ended up saving the show because it was on the verge of cancellation because its ratings were shit. Yep. 
Well, similar thing happened with Beavis and Butthead. People were like, we need to get this show taken off the air, but they just actually like, like funneled a bunch of eyeballs like, oh, this show's supposed to be offensive. See, I want to see it. I mean, that must be why Tim Allen's really trying to sell the idea of him as dangerous, because he's like, ooh, that danger dollar. Yeah. But no one, that's, you know, first of all... No one's buying it. No one fucking buys you as being dangerous. And second of all, the danger dollar ain't what it used to be, because it's not the fucking edgy-ass 90s anymore. We're living in the pussy-ass year of 2018. Well, he wasn't ch- really chasing the danger dollar in the 90s, though. No, he wasn't. Kind of a m- he wasn't. Yeah, you don't see old Tim Allen from back then being like, I'm an anarchist. Comedy yeah, is anarchy. That's why I said he was going for the mainstream middle America dollar at that point. He's like, I want to be generic. I want to be bland. I mean, he was on ABC, dude. It probably it's, wouldn't it's owned be, by Disney. It probably wouldn't be great for his career, but I'd respect him more if he was just honest about it. Like, look, some comics are dangerous. I'm not that guy. I'm looking to please everybody. I'm kind of trying to put out things that, you know, any, any Joe Schmo can watch and not be offended by. And that's basically what he's done, what he's always done, and his reward for all of it, once again, $80 million net worth. So we could sit here all day. We can quibble over details. We can talk our shit about Tim Allen and how he's a fucking unfunny piece of shit. But he's undoubtedly successful. Yep. There's no fucking taking that away. He's got $80 million. No one here has $80 million or even fucking approaching that. What about his wildly popular Doom skin, TJ? Uh, I think we can end on that if you want, unless there's something else we need to go over about this piece of shit. I, I, I can't think of anything that yeah. we haven't left on the on the floor here. I think we've uh, had a pretty good summation of uh, the essence of Tim Allen. I think I think Tim has been truly deep, deep fat. fat. Whoa. All right, we leave you with this beautiful masterpiece of someone having (laughs) maybe just a little bit too much free time. The game Doom, reskinned with Tim Allen in mind. This is a nightmare. <laughs> oh no, dude, the kill it. Grunt. All the kill Tim Allen. Everything's reskinned. All the health pickups are Tim Allen faces. It's it's not. E- they didn't even use different faces. It's they just built it entirely out of this one picture. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. So Tim Allen. This would be your version of hell, right? Yes. If I, if I, you know, got a big chest pain and blacked out and woke up and I was here, I would know. She would know. Certainly. Like, All right, I'm in hell. That I, that I had uh, Heaven definitely gone to hell. Heaven was real and I have not gone there. Yes. I mean, uh, in Doom, you do go to hell. I mean, this, this could be a version of hell. This is a worse version of hell than the one portrayed in the original Doom. Uh, dude, I would, I would easily choose the demons over fucking Tim Allen. I can't fucking hang with this anymore. Jesus Christ. Like, I can't, like, when TJ and Paul showed me this last night, I was literally disturbed. <laughs> like, I was actually, like, frightened. I was Did like, what is this? Did you have nightmares about this? Uh, uh, I didn't have nightmares about this, but I did drink quite a bit to try to forget about it. Yeah, dude. One night you're going to go to bed, TJ, and from underneath your bed, you're going to hear. And you'll know, dude. He's come to reap your fucking soul, dude. He has come. Tim Allen has come to drag you to the Tim Allen zone. All right, all right. So you're uh, now entering that was the, the grunt zone. That was the first episode of ever of Deep Fat Fried. Obviously, uh, you know, we, we're not fucking, we don't know what this is going to be yet, what it's going to evolve into. I think you guys have gotten the gist of what this is. We, instead of doing a bunch of different segments on different things, we go super in depth on one, maybe two, maybe three things if the topics are a little light. Yeah. Won't always be biographical like this one was, too. It's we'll going to be a wide variety of topics. We're going to do such concepts as the apocalypse. We're going to go through the seven deadly sins and talk about how each of them pertains to modern day life. Weird historical uh, stuff. Weird historical events. 
events, historical personages. Movie financing. It's going to go all over the place. All over the place. If you have a subject that you would like to see us tackle comment, here on the show, know. comment down below. Uh, if you want to understand how this show will be monetized in the future, we'll be posting an announcement about that shortly. Thank you for tuning in and watching this uh, premiere episode of Deep Fat Fried. Hope you liked it. Let us know. Good night, everybody. Bye.